Greetings, I'm the dentist. In our dent agenda, we will be continuing the second chapter, Preventive and Community Dentistry. These are the points included in this chapter video series, and in this tutorial, you will learn about pits and fissure sealants. What are pits and fissure sealants? Pits and fissures provide a sheltered niche for bacterial proliferation. Toothbrush bristles are too wide to fit into these areas, making complete plaque removal impossible. A fissure sealant is a material that provides an impervious barrier to the fissure system to prevent the development of caries. Before we get into detail, let's firstly learn about the history of fissure sealants. Over time, several approaches to decrease fissure caries have been tried. One old method of chemical treatments of enamel is with silver nitrate. We use a small brush to paint on the silver nitrate, then immediately seal the area with a fluoride varnish. Once applied, the silver nitrate disinfects and hardens the cavity, which stops the decay progress. Three applications, one month apart, covered with fluoride varnish, are recommended. Another method is prophylactic odontotomy. This involves restoring the fissure with amalgam, which is of course hardly a preventive approach, since there is now a chance of microleakage. In addition, there are several sealants that have been used over the time to seal pits and fissure, including black copper cement, which is not well retained, cyanoacrylate, which is toxic, polyurethane, and resin-modified glass ionomer cements. The most common type of fissure sealants used nowadays is composite resin. These can be used with an acid etch technique, and these resin-based sealants show better retention. As mentioned, the most common type of fissure sealants used nowadays is composite resin with an acid etch technique and this sealant shows better retention. This application technique will be explained in detail at the end of this tutorial. Now to the interesting part, let's answer some important questions regarding pits and fissure sealants. Is there a need for sealants? In other words, are they really effective? In developed countries, the decrease in caries seen in recent years has not been uniform for all tooth surfaces. Part of this reduction in caries rates is due to an increased availability of fluoride in drinking water supplies, leading to a greater reduction in approximal caries particularly rather than in pit and fissure areas. Therefore, the need for a method of preventing occlusal caries is more pressing. Are sealants effective? Well, of course, they have been applied correctly. To be effective, fissure sealant need to be carefully applied to susceptible teeth. They are most valuable in recently erupted, especially first molars, but moisture control may be difficult in early stages of eruption. Therefore, sealants should be monitored and replaced if lost over time. For maximum benefit, teeth should be sealed as soon as practicable after eruption and certainly within two years. For which patient should you apply pits and fissure sealants? Fissure sealants should be provided for sixes in children with impairments, those with extensive caries in the primary dentition, or any kind of poor dentition that could be due to decayed or missing teeth filled surfaces index in two or more. 
Children with caries-free primary dentition don't need routine pressure sealants of sixes, but should be monitored regularly. Sealing primary molars, Ds and Es, is not normally recommended. For which teeth should you apply fissure sealants? Firstly, for children who fulfilled the earlier given criteria, who are impaired or have poor primary dentition. The tooth that will be sealed should be caries free, otherwise it will be a conventional filling. All susceptible fissures of permanent teeth should be sealed, whether occlusal, fissures and cingulum, buccal and palatal pits. Teeth should be sealed as soon as sufficiently erupted for adequate moisture control. When occlusal caries affects one of the sixes, the remaining caries-free permanent molars, sixes and sevens should be sealed. If there is a doubt about a stained fissure, thorough cleaning should be done and a bite-wing radiograph should be taken to ensure that it's a stain and not caries lesion. If the lesion is in enamel, fissure sealing and monitoring clinically and radiographically would be acceptable. But if the lesion extends to dentine, place a preventive resin restoration in case that the cavity does not extend to more than one third of the occlusal surface. Otherwise, a conventional restoration is required. Regarding the retention of the mostly used sealants, resin-based composites. It has been reported that the composite resin-based sealants retention is more than 85% after one year of application, and more than 50% after five years of application, and progressively decline over time. Discussion of the cost-effectiveness of sealants compared to restorations has been well aired over the years. And surprisingly, the end results show that they are not comparable. A fissure sealant is highly effective and reduces the incidence of dentine caries over four years by more than 50%. Sealants can be classified according to different criteria. Firstly, by the polymerization method to a light or a self-cure sealant according to the resin system used, to a bisphenol glycidyl methacrylate, which is his GMA for being short, or urethane diacrylate. According to the color, to a clear or tinted sealant, and whether they are filled or unfilled. Fillers are usually gloss particles used in dental composites, which can give them different properties and different performances according to their size and their presence or absence. Felt sealants generally have more superior performance. They are more abrasion and wear resistance. They have stronger bonding to the tooth and generally more strong. But they have some drawbacks, like they cannot reach the narrow areas at the bottom of the pits or fissures and they need occlusal adjustment after polymerization. On the other hand, unfilled sealants has less performance, like they are less abrasion and wear resistance, they are weaker and they have weaker bonding to the tooth, but they have overcame the drawbacks of the filled sealants, that they can reach the narrow pits and fissures and they wear with occlusion, so they don't need occlusal adjustments after curing. After knowing different types of sealants, you may wonder which type should I use? Well, the choice is one of personal preferences. However, it has been pointed out that coloured or opaque sealants are more readily obvious to both the patient and the dentist and it is more noticeable if the sealant has been lost, so it can be retouched. But an advantage of the clear sealants is that they may allow visualization of decay through the resin. The retention rates of the different types are similar. The success depends upon maintaining an absolutely dry field during application. Glass ionomer sealants do release fluoride, which is an advantage, 
but they have poorer retention than the resin sealants to the tooth surface. But they can be useful for high caries risk children or as a temporary sealant where adequate isolation for successful placement of a resin-based sealant is not yet possible, like in partially erupted teeth or poor cooperation from a young child. Now let's explain the technique of placing a resin-based composite sealant in detail. Firstly, prophylaxis. A thorough cleaning and plaque removal is mandatory. Isolate and dry the tooth. Etch for the time recommended by the manufacturer, usually 20 to 40 seconds, with a 30 to 50% phosphoric acid etch. Wash thoroughly, re-isolate and dry well. If salivary contamination occurs or parts of the surface have not etched well, re-etch, rinse and re-isolate. Application of a suitable enamel bonding agent may improve the retention. Apply the fish sealant. The method of application depend upon the delivery system, usually a syringe with a very narrow nozzle or tip. After polymerization, try to remove the sealant. If satisfactory, occlusal adjustment is usually not required unless a large volume has inadvertently been applied or a filled resin is used. Now after you have done it all, it's time to follow up. Fisher's sealants should be monitored clinically and where appropriate radiographically using bite-wing radiographs. Defective sealants should be replenished to maintain their marginal integrity as long as the tooth is caries-free. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to have you here for more videos. And follow us on Instagram at Dented Gender for extra tips and tricks.